Hi, good morning everyone. Um, my name is Sally Freeman. I'm one of the health and social care lecturers at South Devon College and welcome to our online uh, webinar for health and social care. Um, in the next few minutes, I'm going to talk through um, some of the facts about our courses and what we offer here for health and social care at South Devon College. Um, so I hope you're uh, connected and comfortable at home and um, I'm going to start on our first slide. Go. OK, um, I'm just going to introduce the course structure for anyone who's new to health and social care um, or hasn't ever studied a BTEC at their school. Um, both of our, well, all of our health and social care courses uh, next year are BTEC courses. Um, I'll start with the left hand side of the screen. Um, we've got um, information about our level one and two course. Um, usually it's a one year programme, but there is the option to extend it into a two year programme. Um, I'll just talk about the one year option for now and on the next slide I'm going to talk about the two year option. Um, it involves seven units uh, over the whole year. And the way they're assessed, uh, two of those units are assessed by BTEC in an external exam. Now, I know that sounds um, <clears throat> a bit scary. Some people don't like exams, but there is a recent opportunity for our external exams. Um, so we find our learners, um, you know, enjoy having that option. And, it, you know, people do increase their grades as well in the, in the second attempt if they want to. Um, as well as studying seven units, alongside there'll be a work placement opportunity for students on our level one and two course. Um, we do have, I'll talk more about work placement in a moment, but we do arrange the work placements for you. We have a work placement coordinator for health and social care. So um, it's a really positive experience and learners enjoy being able to uh, apply knowledge to a work placement scenario. Uh, the qualification uh, in year one of the level two course is the BTEC level two certificate in health and social care. Um, as we said, there is an option to extend uh, into year two and that would lead to a BTEC level two diploma. So really all we need to know it's seven units, two exams and the other five units are assessed internally by your tutors um, and then they get uh, moderated externally. We also have an offer, our level three uh, qualification, which is a two year programme. Um, it leads to the qualification, the BTEC level three extended diploma in health and social care. Um, it's a really varied programme. It's got 13 units um, which are covered over two years. Um, in each of the year one and year two, there are two external exams and similar to the level two programme, there is a reset opportunity um, for those external exams. Uh, there is increased work placement on level three. Uh, we do actually offer uh, more hours than the, the minimum that is required for the qualification because we feel that work placement is a really important way to embed knowledge and to develop skills uh, for the future. Again, we have our work placement coordinator, which will help organise the work placements. And over the two years, learners can um, do more than one work placement. Um, uh, in, in varied organisations, but I'll come on to that. So that's really the overview of our, our course structure. Um, so what I'm going to move on to next slide is our Care Academy. So this is new and it's our extension of the Level 2 qualification. So if a learner completes Year 1 of the Level 2 qualification, and maybe doesn't want to do the level three qualification, maybe doesn't want to go to university, but what they really want to do is develop their skills and knowledge um, so they can go into the work placement or they just want to take a bit longer developing their skills. We've got the Care Academy. And what's wonderful about this is it's going to be three days in college and there's going to be two days work placement. So we really are focusing on developing skills and knowledge and then being able to apply them in a health and social care environment on a regular weekly basis. Um, so we've deemed this um, the Care Academy and we're very excited about that. Uh, there'll be units that will be studied and assessed on the year two of this programme uh, on equality and diversity. Uh, we've got some first aid knowledge, infection control, and there'll be lots of um, interesting project based work um, where learners can choose topics, um, work individually and with other learners. Um, so and the units for 
this year of the course are all assessed internally. So that's um, an exciting new option um, rather than going straight on to level three or um, doing something else or going straight into work, you can join the Care Academy. Okay. So I'll just start on the slide here. You can have a read through. We've got our entry requirements. Now, I know it's a difficult year in terms of GCSE results, but um, you will be obviously awarded GCSEs and we'll be um, excited to look at them when we have our enrolment day. Uh, so we just start at the top here for our level three programme. Um, we, we we're expecting learners to come to us who want to do level three with five GCSEs, grades um, level four and above, uh, which would be the old A star to C. And we want them to, within those five, have maths and English language. We do find if you want to progress onto a higher education course, um, which is a clinical, such as nursing or paramedicine, we find having GCSE science grade four and above is really recommended because some of the universities do um, uh, request that as part of their entry requirements. Having said that, um, you, may, you may be able to study, uh, retake that uh, in the as an evening class if you so wish. Uh, level two courses, we're looking for four GCSEs grades or levels three to nine, which is the old A star to D. And again, we want uh, maths and English language um, uh, included in that, so uh, level three or above. So anyone that doesn't have maths or English language um, grade four, they will uh, have to retake GCSEs and so they will have that alongside their health and social care programme. They will have maths and English lessons timetabled in as well during their study days. Uh, and then at the bottom, we've got level one course. Uh, that's three GCSEs, uh, levels two to nine, or the old A star to E. Again, we're looking for maths and English language. If you haven't got those at level four, uh, you would have maths and English language on your timetable as well. So there's an opportunity there to um, have a personalised study programme which has health and social care and possibly maths and English as well. OK. OK, so the types of assessments. This slide um, covers assessment for all levels of courses. Um, what we try to do, because many of the units are internally assessed because it's the BTEC awarding body, uh, we try and include a range of assessments uh, and we always have vocational scenario links. So when we set assignments, it could be that you're um, um, a student nurse, it could be you're working, the scenario could be that you're working in a residential home for the elderly and you have to produce a leaflet or something like that. So with the written assignments, we set essays, reports, leaflets, posters, um, sometimes the topic um, sort of suits a visual presentation uh, to the tutor or to a small group and obviously uh, we have no choice if there are externally set exams which there are for level two and level three uh, those will be sat at college and um, invigilated by our staff here. Um, so the types of topics that are covered go across the levels because we have the um, sort of the essential knowledge that you need for health and social care, such as how to communicate and all the different types and ways of communicating in health and social care. Uh, learning about equality and diversity is very important and the legislation and the needs around that. Uh, we cover individual health needs. Human lifespan development is on all levels, so we're looking um, from you know birth right through to older adults. Physiological disorders, so such as um, coronary heart disease or Parkinson's disease um, or, or any type of the cancers might be covered. Nutrition, we look at safe practice in health and care, which would cover infection control and health and safety. And then if you're on the level three programme and you move into year two, we get some more specialised units such as infection prevention uh, control and we get microbiology, microbiology and anatomy and physiology. So um, it's a really wide range and broad base of knowledge that you're going to gain on a health and social care course, which can lead obviously to lots of different um, um, work scenarios and also higher education programmes. OK, so um, something that South Devon College is um, very um, excited to offer to all of our health and social care skills, which is outside the curriculum for their actual required course content is that all students have a weekly practical skills session. 
Um, so that will involve, we have a, a dedicated practical skills um, classroom in our college uh, where we have equipment, uh, we have sort of a clinical side of the room with more hospital um, equipment and we have a more um, home care domiciliary side of the room where we would um, try to recreate going into someone's home and delivering care. Uh, we have uh, qualified staff who will deliver different skills across the year um, in a lesson once a week. Uh, we're following best practice. The topics that we include in the curriculum for practical skills uh, mirror the care certificate, so the knowledge only side of the care certificate. Um, we give first aid demonstrations and practical knowledge. Uh, learners get to actually um, do much of the knowledge from a first aid qualification. We do some manual handling and we teach them about daily living skills service users how to support people um, could be with assisting with feeding and dressing or planning their day for maybe adults with learning disabilities. Now in order to do this uh, we uh, require students to uh, purchase a uniform at the beginning of the year. Um, it's approximately £35. Um, as you can see in the photograph on the right hand side we've got one of our learners wearing our set of scrubs, um, hugely purple. Um, so it's a scrub top and scrub pair of trousers, approximately £35 and um, you need to be wearing this appropriately for your practical skills lesson once a week. Okay, so learners really enjoy this because they can uh, learn new skills and they can take these skills forward into their work placements um, and they can ask questions of the practical skills tutor if they've come across something in work placement and they, they want to know how to do it or um, they need some more information. OK, so work placement information. Um, these courses are the wonderful because they really value work placement and actually it is part of their um, requirements for, for the courses. Um, level three students will do more work placement than level two, but obviously the, if you go into the care academy at level two, you will also have quite a lot of work placement. Um, so in order to um, uh, get you some work placement, we have a dedicated uh, work placement coordinator for health and social care. So she'll work with you looking where you, where you live, um, so you're not given a work placement too far away from where you live. And also, you know, what your aspirations are, where you'd like to, you know, work in the future, when, when we try and um, get you to uh, match some of those skills up. We tend to use a, a range of placements um, in residential homes for the elderly, nursing homes, centres for adults with learning disabilities as well. And we find those placements give our students a huge range of skills and confidence and um, they can apply a lot of their knowledge in those types of um, work placements. Uh, universities for the clinical programmes such as nursing, midwifery and paramed paramedicine, they, are, they accept those work placements. They know it's very difficult. We can't all be going into hospitals weekly even before this current situation. That was very difficult. So they're very happy with the transferable skills that are learned in work placements, as I described earlier, for uh, knowledge to go forward into a clinical degree. There are usually some opportunities to apply for a hospital placement. Uh, obviously, they will be on hold at the moment, uh, but usually uh, learners apply as in individuals supported by their college tutors, and you may get um, a day or so um, some students will at hospital placement, but they are very hard to come by. It is more of an individual application for those supported by college. OK, so because uh, our learners will be going into uh, work placements, they'll be working with vulnerable adults. Um, so an enhanced DBS, a disclosure and barring service check is required. Um, that's usually around uh, £44. It may come down to £40 uh, recently. Um, so that would be required at the beginning of the course where we help you with your application um, because you need to provide some identification and some evidence of address and we need to get that sent off straight away but we will help you with those um, forms and getting those sent off. Um, later on um, you'll hear from someone from the help zone who will be able to talk to you about financial support for enhanced DBS um, your uniform and any other equipment you might need for the course and see if you're uh, eligible. Okay. okay, so talking about equipment, we've already covered that the uniform the scrub set is around £35. 
and we order those at the beginning of September where you'll uh, try them on and get your sizes sorted out. We we'll also expect you to have your own um, pair of flat black shoes or plain black trainers to wear with your uniform. Um, some of you may already have something suitable, but they, they do need to be plain. They need to have the toes covered in um, and you know, preferably so you can wipe them down because you will be in a workplace and environment. Uh, you also need to be quite comfortable because you'll be wearing them for you know, a whole day of work placement as well. Um, but you know, sort of the um, Converse style uh, plimp soles are fine if they were plain black. Obviously, if you don't have to be Converse, they could be from uh, another high street shop. Um, we also need you, as I said, to get an enhanced DBS check. And of course, textbooks tend to be approximately £25. They are fluctuating in price at the moment on Amazon. Um, they seem to have dropped in price currently, but usually £25 maximum. And we do have the textbooks in our Learning Resource Centre. We have several copies that are always in the library and some you can loan out. So um, you don't necessarily have to buy one yourself. Uh, we'd expect learners to come with the usual um, stationery to a learning environment. So um, paper, a folder, you know, some pencils and pens uh, to every lesson. So um, you don't need an excessive amount of stationery, but you, you do need the normal amount. OK, so I told you a bit about our health and social care courses um, and I think you can see from some of the units there, it's a really broad course and our learners go off in all directions uh, and progress into some really wonderful um, opportunities. Um, at the moment, uh, nationally, health and social care, you know, we are requiring um, new employees and workers and it really is a growth market, particularly in Torbay and South Devon. Uh, we have a high proportion of um, elderly residents here and so it is a, a really um, good employment sector um, in the southwest and probably nationally even more so now. Um, so where do our learners go? Well some of our learners um, internally progress from one level to the next so they might move um, level one to two, two to three. Um, some of our learners go on to our own um, University Centre South Devon and start on our own um, higher education courses. Um, but there's more information about that. Um, many of them go on to the foundation degree programme that we have here that works in partnership with Torbay and Derryford Hospitals. Um, other learners um, go on to other degree programmes at other institutions um, and the types of um, degrees that they might do are child, children's nursing, adult nursing, mental health nurse, uh, midwifery, occupational therapist, social worker, operating department practitioner, podiatry, paramedic science and every year we're always expanding um, our progression paths and where our learners go next. Um, you'll also as part of your course you'll find out about what some of these professionals do if you're not familiar with some of them. Uh, also uh, successfully uh, many of our learners do gain part-time employment sometimes whilst they're on the course in um, social care and many of them then go on to full-time employment um, in the health and social care sector locally. Um, obviously they want to progress and get to more senior roles um, and some of them um, have um, ideas to progress on to management of uh, care facilities in the future. Other learners go on to employment within um, Tall Bay Hospital. So we've had learners go into uh, employment as healthcare assistants, support workers and phlebotomy in the past. So it really is a, a varied progression path for our learners. Okay, so the expectations that we have um, as a college and also in health and social care, um, you might be familiar with some of them from your schools, but we're looking for excellent attendance and punctuality. This is really important because we find learners who miss lessons, um, really are missing key explanations and we add context to the theory in lessons and you know if you don't if you're not maintain high attendance it's it, you can get behind. Punctuality is extremely important we're trying to develop skills for employment um, uh, and working in the sector also in work placement you need to be punctual you need to be on time or slightly early so that's very important. Uh, practical sessions and work placement, we want all of our learners to be wearing their health and social care uniform correctly, um, on time wearing it and we will show you how to wear it correctly and appropriately. Uh, we like all of our assessed work has to be completed and handed in on time, um, as you'd expect. 
but also within the classroom. We want you to complete all the tasks expected of you in the classroom and if we set homework for the evening or over the, the next few days. So that is something and to complete all tasks that our teachers are asking for you in the classroom. Um, we set all of our learners um, have a personal tutor and we work with all of our learners to set a, a target grade that's personal to you. So we want each learner to be committed um, to achieving their target grade and to work into the highest standard possible for them with support from your lecturers and teachers. As you'll learn through the course, we will teach you what the health and care values are. And within your day-to-day um, -day life at college and while you're on work placement in practical skills, we're, we're looking to you to demonstrate these health and care values and to really with, uphold these, these standards. We like you to be able to engage and communicate with your fellow students and tutors um, so that we, we're all aware of any situations and you know um, it sets a nice um, situation in the classroom when everyone's communicating and um, contributing to the lessons as well. OK, we've got a short video to show you here of uh, one of our past learners, Caitlin, and her experience at college. So we'll get that started. OK, so that was Caitlin um, from uh, a few years ago. OK, uh, so our last slide um, is just a little bit about our campus and facilities at South Devon College. So as a health and social care learner, you'll be at our main campus um, in Long Road in Paynton. Uh, that's where we've got a specialist practical skills room. Um, all the whole site, if you haven't already visited, um, obviously in the future, we'd love to see you. Um, it's modern, it's clean, it's spacious learning environments. Um, all of our learners on any courses um, say they enjoy being on the site um, in our campus. Um, across the campus, we've got access to IT suites uh, where learners can book their own computers to work on their assignments and do some research. Sometimes also during lessons, we will move to an IT suite so we can uh, work interactively and learners can research and use um, IT uh, during the lesson. We've got a large learning resource centre over two floors where we um, stock lots of journals and course textbooks, um, non-fiction and fiction books as well for you to borrow. Also on our campus, we've actually got the university centre so you can see what it'd be like to progress onto one of our higher education programmes. Um, so we do visits there and go and listen to some of the, the research showcases that our higher education um, learners have been uh, producing. Um, also, we've got wonderful facilities. We've got a gym and leisure facilities where they run classes and yoga and Pilates and spinning. And it's, it's very uh, cheap to join compared to um, external gyms. We've got a whole range of cafes and restaurants. There's food and snacks to suit everyone at reasonable prices. And we've got student clubs and student union activities going on uh, most weeks across the college. Um, it's also very well connected by public transport um, and buses. Um, so there should be um, you know, buses to connect you from your home address. OK, so that's the end of uh, my presentation about our health and social care courses. I'm just going to uh, hand over to uh, Ben from the Health Zone and see if there are any questions. Thank you very much, Sally. I, we can't see any questions coming so far, so I will um, move on to the same part of the presentation. So if you if following Sally's presentation, you would like to make an application with us, please visit southdevon.ac.uk. Um, enter the name of your chosen subject into the search box. And then navigate to your chosen course. 
You can check your details of a course on the page to make sure it matches your career goals and aspirations. And then click apply now at the top right of the page to create an account with us. Following the application, you will receive a phone call from our tutor um, to the number you gave us. This is to discuss your course choice and receive a conditional offer based on your grades. If you'd like guidance following this call, please inform a tutor during the call and our level six qualified information advice and guidance team will phone you to follow up. Following results day, if your grades are not what you expect, our guidance team will be available to find the right course for you. This may include a different level course for your chosen subject, but please remember you can also change your course, co course choice before enrolling with us at the end of August. To do so or to arrange an interview, please email us at inquiries at southdevon.ac.uk or alternatively call us on 08000 380 123. We take our responsibility to your, support your learning very seriously at South Devon College. That's why we have a dedicated learning support team which offers a range of services to assist your learning, including study skill support, additional maths and English support, and the Lodge, which is a provision of our painting campus for learners with a diagnosis of autistic spectrum condition. We also have British Sign Language communicators, specialist equipment, dyslexia based packages and tailored programmes of study, including specific tutorial time. If you have any questions about support, please don't hesitate to contact us by emailing support at southdevon.ac.uk. We also have a positive intervention team at the college, which is a team of people within the college that offers emotional and pastoral support to help learners achieve their potential, stay on course and develop personal and social skills in preparation for employment or further education. We work hard to support personal welfare and well-being and can put you in contact with other supporting agencies if required. If you have any questions regarding positive intervention, please email piadmin at southdevon.ac.uk. We offer a bursary at the college uh, if you live in a household with an earned income of under £25,000 before tax. This offers a range of support for students, including course equipment, uniform, DBS checks, meals, tuition fees and travel. For those with a household income of between £21,000 and £25,000, you will receive support in form of a free bus pass. And for those of under £21,000 of household income, you may be eligible for both a travel support and our bursary, depending on your course and your individual circumstances. Bursary applications will be open on our website from the 25th of May. In order to apply for the bursary after the 25th of May, please visit southdevon.ac.uk, scroll down on our front page and click on bursary support. And then once on that page, click on the top link which says click here to apply for your bursary. You can create an account with us, upload photos of your household income and submit your application from there. If you're an adult and you want to study a level three access to higher education diploma or a level three to six vocational qualification with us, you will need to pay for the cost of your course. The government can help with this in form of the advanced learner loan. It's easy to apply for, doesn't take your household income into account and doesn't involve a credit check. It works very similarly to how student loans work in that repayments are linked to what you earn and not how much you've borrowed. You only have to start making repayments when you finish your course and you're earning over £25,725 a year. Until then, you don't need to pay anything back, but you can make voluntary repayments at any time. Should you take your studies on to higher education and complete a course that's related to your access or vocational course, Student Finance England will write off any outstanding balances you owe meaning you do not have to repay it. If you, do, if you do not receive a bus pass through our bursary and you would like to purchase one from us instead, we have a partnership with Stagecoach where we can offer a day rider travel pass, which covers the Torbay area, Kingswear, Dartmouth, Totnes, Newton Abbott, Timoth and Dawlish, and an Explorer travel pass, which covers the day, day rider zone by South Brent, Ivy Bridge, Plymouth, Chudley, Ashburton, Bubby Tracy, Buckfastly and Exeter. We're finalising prices for this currently, but as a guide, our day rider travel pass cost £300 for the year last year, and our Explorer travel pass cost £420. These can also be split up into term payments. In order to apply for the bus pass after 25th of May, please visit southdevon.ac.uk, scroll down on the front page and click on travel support, and you'll find a link for the SDC travel pass application form where you'll find instructions to complete the form and send it back to us at funding at southdevon.ac.uk. We've also been asked when it'd be possible to come and see the college. 
Uh, we're working on this and we'll keep you up to date by email and inform you once we've received further advice from the government about when this will be possible. If you have any further queries at all about your application or South Devon College in general, please email us at inquiries at southdevon.ac.uk or alternatively phone us on 08000 380 123. We look forward to seeing you at South Devon College. This webinar will be available on our website for the next few weeks. And can I ask, does anyone have any questions? OK, so I've been asked to hand back to Lucy and Sally to um, answer some questions. Uh, would you like to take over, guys? OK, thank you, Ben. Um, I've got a question uh, that Lucy should be able to answer. Um, you got your microphone off, Lucy. It's on now. <laughs> OK, so a commonly asked question um, from our learners is, do I have to wear my uniform all of the time? No, Sally, you don't have to wear your uniform all the time. We ask that you wear it for your practical skills lessons, as you talked about in the presentation. We also ask that you wear it to work placement. If you want to wear it on your college day, that's absolutely fine. But you need to remember that to wear it appropriately and um, following guidance set by um, healthcare and social care standards. Brilliant, thank you. Um, another question some people might be wondering about. Um, it says we're only in, co in college for three days. Does it still count as a full time course? Yeah, absolutely. Three days is a full time course. Um, the common question is, well, what am I going to be doing on the other two days? Well, Sally's mentioned to you during the presentation that you will do work placement. Those of you that are doing um, a one day work placement, you'll be using your additional day in the week to complete tasks linked to your study programme. Excellent. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. OK, thank you, everybody. That completes our webinar for today.